I think you need to know some of my background before you understand the whole process. I was born and raised in Salt Lake City. I'm a Mormon Jew, as they called me. And uh, I didn't start the university till I was 28 because I had children to raise. And uh, history was the farthest thing from my mind. I thought I was gonna go into interior designing until I discovered nothing would be more boring than to put other people's furniture where they wanted it. But in the process of getting into those classes, I discovered historical furniture. And I had to take as an undergrad three classes in, in history, ancient, medieval, and modern. And all of a sudden, some things happened to me that was just incredible. On top of it, being Jewish, I was never comfortable going to the synagogue. I Even at five years old, I remember I would see people praying and, you know, standing and singing. And I, I couldn't understand it, and I felt guilty for most of my life because of the fact that I thought, you know, God, you're stupid you know, or what's wrong with you, and I was too too young to inquire from my parents, who frankly did not know any more than I did. And it didn't find, I didn't find out, and I had been confirmed in Sunday school, I had been married twice under the chuppah, I had uh, raised children, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, and went through the whole thing. I was very active in the Jewish community in Salt Lake. But when I started at the University of Utah, I discovered that I'm a secular Jew. I'm not a religious Jew. And I thought, well, maybe I can do something for mankind in that direction and feel fulfilled by doing this. And at that time, during the early 70s, something in history was changing and it came about primarily from this oral history program that I can't remember his first name. I could check it out because I wrote it down. His last name is Nevins. He was from Columbia University. He's the one that changed the entire format of interviewing people. Before you would interview politicians and dignitaries, not the common man. And the common man was coming out during the early 70s. And uh, so much was done there. And then I got involved in interviewing the Jewish community. And I'd lived there all my life. And I found things in these interviews, so help me, I had never known before. And so uh, with this kind of evolution and revolution, and I found myself and I found where I was comfortable. And then there was a point where I got my master's degree in history. I was 42 at the time. The two people ahead of me, I was working in records management and archives at the University of Utah. And both these gentlemen were going to be around for another eight or 10 years. And I said, I've got to leave. And I moved down here to LA. And frankly, pardon the vulgarity, I didn't have a pot to do no, you know what in. I mean, I had nothing. My daughter lived here and I moved in with her. And that's one thing I learned. Kids can come home, but you don't move in with your children. So anyway, one thing led to another. And uh, during my master's, master's thesis, I did a book on the history of the Jews of the Intermountain West states uh, during the 19th century using the Anglo-Jewish press. And I ran into a man named Herman Silver. And Silver was born about 18, 1830, something like that, in Hamburg, Germany. And his parents sent him to America. Apparently he had uh, asthmatic or some sort of tubercular problems. Moved here, became friends with Abe Lincoln. Uh, and eventually Ulysses Grant sent him to Denver. He was not your regular peddler or pioneer. I mean, he was a sophisticated man. 
he was a lay rabbi. And by the 18, by 1885, when I'm ready to close shop, I was going to go originally from 1826 to 1900 for this thesis. But by 1885, I had so much material and the next 15 years were so broad that I just stopped. And Herman, <coughs> Herman all of a sudden dies out. He's a lay rabbi and I know he didn't pass away because when he and his wife celebrated their 25th anniversary, the governor of the state came, so you knew there would have been a eulogy, something for him. Turns out he moved here. Turns out he becomes, he runs for office for council, becomes president the first year. I mean, highly respected, highly respected. This is at the time that the water became part of the city. Before that, it was private industry. And the uh, uh, city council decided that we would have our first water commission. And Herman ends up being the president of the first water commission. Well, he has an opportunity to run <coughs> again for council, but he decides he's going to run for mayor. And he runs again against Meredith Pinky Snyder, who had been mayor three times, not at that time, but he's one of the only people, if not the only one, that outside of Tom Bradley, that made it three times. Well, Pinky did not like Herman, uh, and Herman lost the election, and that is the day my life changed. I decided, I moved here like September 28th, August 28th, 1978. And I was just trying to get my act together. I decided I was going to go to, UC, to USC for library school, which I did. And I had to find myself a job. Well, until I got to a point where I could go discover more about Herman, it was on July 5th, 1979. So being coming from a pristine community <coughs> with the idea of art and, and archives and record keeping, you know, it was very narrow in my scope and I expected everybody else to think the same way. So I find out that the records, the historical records are in the city clerk's office. So I march in there and I ask to please see the city archives. And they say, oh, it's upstairs. And I go upstairs. I had to turn the light on. I'm looking around. There's stuff all over the floor. But they had a little room where all the historical, the historical records. We have every minute book and index since incorporation of 1850. So, I mean, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, who are these crazy people to let me, who they don't know, up here, I could have slashed everything to bits. So anyway, I happened to find the Old Star newspaper, which was the first one, uh, the first newspaper. And by God, it's the same year that Herman ran for office. So I sit down in this chair, and I'm going through it, and I discover that he lost for two reasons. First of all, he was too old to be mayor at that time. Second of all, there was rampant anti-Semitism here. And Prudent Baudry was a, a raving anti-Semite. So I'm sitting there and I'm perusing this and all of a sudden a man walks upstairs and he introduces himself as Bill Ashdown, the assistant city clerk. Turns out he's from northern Utah. Turns out he's a Mormon. And we start chewing the fat. And we are just having a good old time. I felt like I finally found somebody who, who knows how I feel. So he says to me, this is July 5th. He said, this is 1979. He said, in 1981, LA will be celebrating its bicentennial. 
And we have put in a request to the federal government under, I can't remember, they had a group for the arts and a group for the humanities, I can't remember their formal name. They put in a request in the humanities area to bring in an archivist in 1980 for eight months to help prepare for the bicentennial. So, you know, I kind of got excited. And Bill said to me, what do you do? And I told him my background was in records management and archives. He said, would you be interested? And I kept thinking, is the Pope Catholic what I do? <coughs> of course. So I take his card. Will you give he, me one second? I'm sorry, Hinda. I've been fighting a cup. Oh, honey, right there's so much of it going I'm on. I'm sorry, I got water. You bet. I'm sorry. So, oh, don't apologize. <coughs> I hope I'm not. No, 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 no. I mean, you you have to need know where I came from to understand what my feelings are and what I. Yeah, of course. This is wonderful. Yeah. I, don't, I felt bad interrupting you. Don't worry, Bill. Okay. So anyway, uh, I leave Bill, and I found out why Herman didn't make it as uh, as as uh, the the mayor. But something else I had learned. When Herman, in the first session, the Water Commission came into being. First time in the city of LA, the water was under the jurisdiction of the city. And this, this, Council must have adored Herman. He became the first president of the Water Commission. And there were seven members on the board. When Herman ran against Pinky Snyder, and Snyder won, he cut the commission to five and got rid of Herman. Well, the council, the commission was so furious that there was a lake in the hinterlands of Los Angeles and they decided to name it after him, Silver Lake. And by God, that community is named after Herman Silver. And to me, that is one of the greatest stories. I went to the library and I got a photograph of him. I mean, I took it and it's in my home office. He was so gorgeous, I can't put it into work. Absolutely elegant. And uh, uh, I was so thrilled to be part of this. So I get these professional journals as the summer goes on and all of a sudden I'm reading that LA got this, this bid, this grant, to, to hire an archivist. So I decided I had his card. I'd wait a week or two to see if he contacts me. So I call Bill two weeks later. He says, where the hell have you been? I lost your name and number. I want you to have a resume and three letters of recommendation in by next week. Well, the next day I had the resume, and the following week I had 12 letters of recommendation. I'd been doing a lot of work all over the country, and I figured I should let them know it. Well, by God, there must have been close to 100 people who applied, and it kept getting narrowed and narrowed, and I got it. I tell you, I was beyond anything in my entire life, and of course, most of the historical records, you've got what you have to understand. And I don't know if you have, have you been over to the city archive? Okay, so you know one side is the record center, and then the other, the smaller side is the city archives. Well, at that point, we had no archives, or at least I didn't know of one. But it turned out that at Piper Tech, they were building an area that was going to be a microfilm vault. 
and it's next door to this enormous warehouse that we eventually moved into as a record center. And my first job was to collect all the material I could get to move into the city archives. And you know, I grew up thinking that LA was La La Land and that they destroyed everything 15 minutes after it was built. And uh, when I got this position, I was a bit concerned because of my old attitudes. I wasn't sure what I would find, but I did remember that they had every minute book and index in that room upstairs. And I thought, I'm in for really something. Well, it turns out we even have the minute books from 1828 to the American occupation in Spanish translated into English. We have so many things. You, have you seen my two-story, my, my two-volume book? Okay. That, I want that so badly. I want it. It's $100, right? I'll give you one. Oh, thank you. I've it's got it in the time. house. I've got it in the, uh, an extra copy. Don't tell anybody. Right. I'll give it to you. Thank you. We'll take it off the film. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. The point is that um, I had done a book prior to that, that was published in 96. I don't know if you've ever seen Doyce Nunes's book, okay. Well, I told Doyce that I was going to, it, it's a bibliography of LA County from 1900 to 1970. He used Fletcher Bowron's collection of uh, three by five cards, and that's how the book was built. So I said to Doyce, I'm itching to do something. So I do it from 1970 to 1990. I really thought I would have loved to have waited 10 years, but I was itching to do something. So we got that published, and it was published in 96. And I kept thinking about the archives, and I kept thinking about what a contribution to this city these archives hold. I mean blood, sweat, and tears. And I'm not one of these people who will sanitize anything. Because the warts are what make us interesting and like what we're going through today in, 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 in the world. This is a warty time for us, but this is a time of crisis and I, I'm now a Buddhist Jew. I live by their model that the definition of crisis is opportunity. And so, you know, I said to Doyce, I said, I called him, you know Doyce? Okay. I said to him, we've got to write something on the history of this government using the archives as the foundation for this evolution of what we are today. And he liked the idea, and we pulled together an advisory board and evolved and evolved into uh, what uh, it turned out to be. I just sent, by the way, two copies, one to Mayor Daly and one to Mayor Bloomberg, because Doy said, this is the only book of its kind in this country. It literally tells the history of the government. We have, I don't know if you know this or not, I don't know if you've ever seen them, the green books, they're, they're all over the place in the city. They are a listing of government officials from 1850 up to 1965. And when I finished it, Doyce said to me, now it's up to you to bring it up to date. So I got another grant and it will be on the city clerk's uh, webpage on the internet. Uh, we have converted everything from the books listing. All the officials were up to 1975, which is Tom Bradley's era, which is a incredibly large thing to be dealing with. But it is so magnificent. And you see this evolution 
this evolution of the city, I need to give you another book. It was called uh, Burton Hunter's, it was his master's degree. He had been the controller for a while. Was he controlled? No, I think he was head of personnel. He took this book as his 1932 master's degree at SC on public administration, and he traces LA government from 1850 to 1932. Then Fred Crawford, who becomes the uh, director of the harbor, when he goes to UCLA, he finishes this from 25 up to when he graduated. And so I am hoping to a certain degree we have fulfilled their needs, although in both instances they list ordinances and the numbers and everything else, although we, we have in this two volume book that I, we did, <coughs> pardon me, um, we have 26 chapters, 32 authors, uh, it's over a thousand pages. Uh, it is one of the most incredible studies.